Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt with 86 Gaming, and we're going to be taking a look at a T9 Gaming keypad. Once again, I'm looking at the company one by one, which I discovered just recently uh, when I started making the videos. I, I either did the mouse video first or did this one first. I'm not sure. You'll find out before I do, probably. Well, that makes sense. I'll probably find out before you do which one I decide to do first. But this is a T9 gaming keypad, and what do you do with this? Have you ever seen one of these before? Do you know how you would want to use it, and what's the best way to use it? Is there a, a good option at that, uh, and what do you think they're designed for, I guess? So that's kind of the thing. It's a little bit of a luxury item. As you know, Razer probably, if well, you might not know, but Razer makes the Orb Weaver before that. It was the Tartarus, I think, and then there was something else b before that. But um, they make the Orb Reaver, which is an RGB T9 keypad, and uh, Logitech has one too, but it's just horrifically ugly. I can't make myself look at it. But um, anyways, that's kind of what we're looking at here, and, and why is this one a good deal? Why is this something that I wanted to look at? Well, because like the Orb Weaver is over $100. Just to have something that you can play with extra on the desk aside of a keyboard, it just it doesn't make sense to me. Why wouldn't you just buy you know a Strape or something nice? Uh, a nice mechanical keyboard versus buying one of these. Well, I have an implemented idea that other people use this for that I think is a great idea for this device itself. Now, this is a really cool one because it comes in at sub $50, at least where I, what I got for it. You can check that out down below if this is something you've been interested in. It's kind of a, a niche market, I guess. Did I say that word right? Niche, 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 something like that. Anyways, it's kind of that kind of market where it's more for the people that are looking for something like this may be interested in it versus oh well, that's a good idea i need one of those because it's cool and looks neat it's fully rgb it uses kale blue switches the kale blue switches were a real big uh, nice thing for me because i didn't expect that in something like this i thought that that was something that was pretty cool it has a nice palm rest right here that you can rest your palm on and the thumb just naturally feels great on this spacebar implementation button right here there is something to kind of note off the bat about it while you might be used to using shift or something to do something, shift is actually in a different spot on this keypad. This is typically where caps lock would be, so shift should be down where control and the G button are here. But uh, instead we have shift right here, and that is kind of alien feeling if you're used to having shift a little bit lower below where the caps would normally be. So that's something to consider as well. Just make sure you're aware of that. You're going to have to kind of re-muscle memory yourself if you decide to start playing on something like this. And uh, pretty much that covers the key layout there for you. I'll do a quick sound test. I don't need the pretty hands of Laura to do a, a typing test on this because I can just buffoon around on it and let you hear what that sounds like. So we'll do that real quick. And that's what it sounds like. Other things, it's got a nice long cable too. It's a little lo little longer than six feet, I think, and that's something that's pretty cool with the, of course, the, the gold USB connector on it, but that really means nothing, a little to nothing to me anyways. Now this is an OEM design, which means other companies use it as well, one by one's implementation of it with their logo here. So you'll probably see ones that look like this from other companies as well. It's just they pick up the design and they do their own thing with it essentially. And uh, that's something that's, you know, typical for budget companies or most budget companies. Around the sides, we have these red bars here. These glow red. I saw a lot of people complaining that there was no way to turn the red light off that glows around the sides. And uh, that's just not true. You actually can while it's not in the book that I could find anyways. Maybe it's in the book, but I could not find it in the book. Hitting escape and this will turn off that red glow around the side. It gives you either a static red or the option to have it breathing. And uh, you can just turn it off altogether if you don't like it. I don't like it. I turned it off. It is fully RGB, which is pretty cool. You can change through all kinds of different functions using the 1 through 6 key up here, as well as different static lights using the F series keys up here. So that's something that's neat. On the bottom, we have four very discreet feet to help keep it from sliding around, and they fail miserably on most surfaces to help keep it from sliding. So I would recommend maybe some little rubber pads that you could put on the bottom of it, because when you're trying to play and that thing is going all over the place, it's a little bit obnoxious and a little bit annoying. Uh, the spacebar button here, I should mention that this little spacebar button is actually kind of in between for how I like it. Uh, just resting my thumb on it sometimes causes it to actuate, and I don't like that at all. It has multiple levels of brightness, which is pretty cool, and on top of that, there's even a CD drive that has drivers on it. However, the downside to this is when you go to one by ones website to try to download the drivers for it, it's just not there. And that's unfortunate because I had to go through the process of digging up an old laptop, putting it on there, stripping it to a USB, and then putting it on the PC. 
And in there, you can do simple things like your lighting controls. If you don't want to play around with all this stuff right here, you can simply go in there and pick lighting controls, brightness, speeds, uh, what direction you want the RGB wave to go if you go with that one. You can do all of that inside of the, the, uh, the software itself. Uh, the other good thing about it is you can program macros in there. So that's pretty cool and for under 50 bucks, pretty awesome, I think, as well. That you can have macros programmed in there for your gaming experience. Now, in what circumstances would this really be for somebody? I think, and this is my opinion, while some people would probably want to use it with their desktop, uh, that's cool, but you might as well just use the keyboard that you have or get a, you know, invest in a better mechanical keyboard that you can play with. You might not like mechanical, you might like chiclet, you might like membrane, that's, that's on you guys, I'm just saying. If you were going to invest anywhere $50 and upwards, maybe it's worth looking at getting a better mechanical keyboard than it is to get one of these because that way you have a keyboard. Well, what I think that this is best for, if you've ever heard of things like Zim or uh, Keymander, these are things that you plug into consoles that will help translate to the console uh, a mouse and keyboard. Now, is it 100% flawless? No. From what I hear, sometimes it's kind of hit or miss, but that's where something like this and a mouse would come in handy. If you want to set it up on like a little ottoman and play your games you know, on the console with mouse and keyboard, some people do that. You're also looking at investing somewhere between... 80 to 100 plus dollars for a Zim or Keymander, things of that nature. So that's something to consider as well. But I find this would probably fit best for console gamers that want the mouse keyboard experience on their console games. There are exclusive titles that we'd just feel more comfortable or at home playing with a keyboard and a mouse. Uh, on top of that, some people use it in multiplayer online games where they feel like they get the edge up, and that's likely, for the most part, pretty true. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover on it. It has a bunch of neat little lighting effects on it, which I've hopefully showed throughout this video. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in something like this, check the link down below. It's definitely pretty cool, and if I am correct on this, this model itself from the OEM manufacturer received the Red Dot Award. And the Red Dot Award is an innovative award awarded, uh, I think it's based out of Germany, and uh, it's not, you know, something that you just see thrown onto things. It's, it's, you know, it showed itself, it's proved itself, and then companies like One by One pick it up and uh, rebrand it and sort of do their own thing with it. So the actual design of it is supposed to be pretty amazing, and it feels nice. It's got a good rubbery ABS feeling to it. Anyways, I, I'm babbling again. You guys have a great day, night, whatever it is. I'll see you in the next video that I do. got a nice rest rest. It's got a nice, the kale blue switches were a big turn on for me because, haha. <laughs>